Yeah, I agree. That's a very valid question. See, can mindfulness help the world and to deal with the big problems that we have? And yes, uh, a few years ago I was invited to the UNESCO uh, to speak and there the UNESCO head was speaking. He said that uh, it was the 60th anniversary of the United Nations UNESCO Foundation. So they said that basically when the charter, they said that war begins in the minds of people. So peace also has to begin in the minds of people. So if we consider the, clim- the climate change, a significant part of it is human induced. And uh, that's largely because we have this indiscriminate urge to exploit nature for our own purposes. Now that has come because, for many reasons, but one is we don't have inner fulfillment. The less inner fulfillment we have, the more outer domination we seek, the more control. That is what see, we all need a sense of self-worth, of satisfaction, of security, of belonging. Either we can get it by organizing and managing our thoughts in a constructive way. If we can't, then we try to do it by controlling others, by controlling externals. So if we could become more mindful, then that mindfulness will permeate all walks of our life. It is, if we learn to manage our thoughts better, at least we'll manage our relationships better. We'll be able to manage our jobs better. We will understand our and function in our social roles better. So we pollute the environment because our consciousness is polluted. If you can remove the pollution from our consciousness, if the greed, the possessiveness, the domineering mentality, the entitlement mentality, all these, if our consciousness, by mindfulness, we understand these are like pop-up window that have come and they've consumed our screen now. If we can minimize them, then naturally that will express itself in outer actions. We ha- I come from India, from Mumbai, so we have a Govardhan Eco Village. It's an eco-friendly community which has won international awards including an award from the United Nations. So there, it started about 10 years ago. It's just a few individuals wanting to live in an eco-friendly spiritual way. And now it is attracting people from across the world to come and see as a sample. And that's just one example I know from my tradition. But there are many people who are living more consciously and mindfulness is a big part of the of the awareness and the ability to live more consciously. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, please. <coughs> Okay, yeah. So, those who are not able to put bad things in their perspective, uh, how can we help them? One of the common problems in today's world is the victim mentality. All of us, things have gone wrong in our life. I travelled across the world, I have interacted with many phenomenally successful people, successful people. And just scrap a little below the surface, you'll find that everybody is working through their own tragedies. Life is tough for everyone. Of course, I'm not saying life is equally tough. For some people it can be unbearably tough. But even for everyone it is tough. So the victim mentality makes us feel sorry for ourselves. See, we all will be victimized in life. But we don't have to self-identify ourselves as victims. So often, when we feel ourselves to be victims, or when we feel ourselves overwhelmed by the things that have happened to us in, in the past, or maybe are even happening right now, one thing that happens is, 
that we feel powerless. We feel helpless, we feel powerless. Oh, such a terrible thing happened to me, what can I do about it? I am powerless. Sometimes we feel that I am in such a situation, I am so trapped, there is nothing I can do about this. Have any of you been in a situation like that? Where you felt powerless? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, almost all of us. Now, thank you. Now we could turn, then this, this sense of powerlessness is very dangerous. And to get ourselves out of it, we could do a counterintuitive thought exercise. Okay, no matter how bad things are, can I make them worse? What kind of question is that? Who would want to make anything worse? See, they are already bad. Now, of course, we don't. We're not actually going to do it. But, but can we make things worse? No matter how bad things are, we always have the power to make them worse. See, say, if I drive carelessly and I, and I get into an accident and I fracture one foot of mine, I'm in the bed. I'm in, all my plans are disrupted. I feel helpless because I'm in the bed. And immobilized, but I can take a hammer and crack my other knee also, isn't it? So, no matter how bad things are, we can always make them worse. And if we have the power to make things worse, that means we all we are not as powerless as we think. That means we have the power to make things better also. So actually, I usually do this as a full one day workshop and the second part to it, which I could not go into, but I'll mention this briefly, that we, we can always open a new tab in our life. Say if one, sometimes some pop-ups come up and they pop up and there is no, you can't spot them in the only. Where do you cross it? So you just go to some other screen. So like that, open a new tab in your life. TAB is an acronym, T-A-B. No matter how powerless we are, three things are always in our control. Our thoughts, our attitude and our behavior. Our thoughts means, what do I think about? See, somebody has betrayed me, somebody has wounded me, somebody has violated me, whatever. Life can, life can be horrible at times. But what we think about is always in our control. Some bad thing has happened to us and to deal with it, we have to think about it. But we don't have to constantly keep thinking about it. So, especially our spiritual spirituality can provide us a satisfying, strengthening object of thought. So, what I think about, I got a fracture. I can keep thinking about the fracture and feel sorry for myself. Or I can think, okay, on this bed, what can I do? Maybe I can read this, now I have my phone, I can access this, I can do that. Maybe I can do this course while I am on the bed or whatever. What we think about is in our control. That the world doesn't control it. People can't control it. Second A is attitude. Attitude means how we look at what has happened. You can just say that, oh, this terrible thing has happened. And my life, always terrible things keep happening. My life is rotten, the world is against me. I am doomed. Or we can look at it as yes, bad things do happen. But sometimes bad things lead to something good. Sometimes when one door closes, that's how another door opens. And if you look back in our own lives, we may see that what bad things happen to us. Sometimes that led to a better thing happening. And this is where, uh, where actually and awareness of the higher reality of the universe that there is a higher organizing principle there is a deeper intelligence in the universe that can help so things may not go according to my plan things may not be in my control but that doesn't necessarily mean they are out of control they are under some higher control and if I just keep doing my part things will be taken care of so an attitude is Oh, this is terrible and my life is doomed. This is attitude, this is terrible, but maybe something good will come out, out of it. Let me see what I can do. That's attitude. And B is behavior. Behavior means how we act 
is up to us. Or sometimes some people get sick and they behave in such a sick way that all their caregivers become sick of them. Or sometimes some people are sick and still they try to maintain a positive, cheerful attitude and they create warmth around them. So they attract of warmth also. So behavior means what? And how we act in the situation is up to us. And one way to behave in a constructive way amidst difficulties is to, de is to decrease our functioning frame of reference. That means if something terrible has happened to me from my past and if I start thinking and I'm still reeling under the impact of that, if I start thinking what will happen to me after 10 years, what will happen to me after 20 years or even what will happen to me after one year. At that time the variables are too many and thinking about too much long term only overwhelms us. So decrease the functioning frame of reference. Okay, For this one day today, can I act in a way that doesn't make things worse. It's pretty Can I act in a way that, a more positive note, that makes things better? Can I act in a proper way for this one day today? Or even if one day appears too much, for the next one hour. Can I behave in a way that would make things better? One way to do this is also, you know, if, uh, if I were counseling someone who were in this situation? If my friend were in this situation, how would I suggest that they act in this situation? Hmm? There are many things in our life we know we should be doing, but we are not doing them. There are many things which we know we should not be doing, but we are doing them. So behavior means, just for the next one hour, can I act in the best way that is possible for me in this situation? And if you do that for one hour, at the end of the one hour, Take a few deep breaths and appreciate yourself. Not in an egoistic way, but in an encouraging way. Good job. Now, you can do this. So you're not as helpless as you thought. Now, let's do this for one more hour. And if you keep doing this, we'll discover that we are stronger than what we thought. Our spirituality especially can help us to discover layers of strength that we didn't know we had. No matter whatever faces us, what graces us can always be stronger. And if we just keep moving forward in, in functional frame of function, small frame of reference, keeping steps forward, forward, forward. We may feel I am in a dungeon, but we'll discover that it's not a dungeon. It's a tunnel. And we will come to the light at the end of the tunnel. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Anyone last question? Yes, okay, there too. Okay, yeah. Um, does meditation, uh, from your perspective, does, can it help to um, uh, cure mental illness, like mental illness, like depression, or does it simply help you to meditate? So if you meditate on a regular basis, okay, you, I understand your question. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Does meditation cure depression or does it only manage depression? Or Say, other mental, other mental illnesses also. Okay, see, uh, this is a little uh, complicated question. I would answer it in three different points. First is that, as I said, sometimes mental illness can have a neurochemical component to it. Hmm. But it is not healthy to presume that that is the case. Why can you depress? Just take some, pop some pills. That can create dependency on the pills. So, we could, we need a multi-dimensional approach to it. If, if my relationships are horrible, if my career is down the drain, if my health is poor, and I feel depressed, well, there are reasons to feel depressed. And just taking some pills is not going to solve the problem. I need to address those issues also as much as I can. So same way with respect to meditation. So what applies to medication also applies to meditation. 
it's not that if everything else in my life is wrong and i meditate and everything will be solved no meditation can give me the inner strength and with that inner strength i can work to address the relationship issues the health issues the career issues so it's not that at meditation like a magic wand that will solve all problems during meditation if we do it well we will feel good we will feel peace we will feel power we will feel a sense of purpose coming into us and with that power and purpose we need to act in our life so in that sense when when our life is still a mess meditation can help us to at least manage the causes of depression so that we don't get overwhelmed by it but if we make it a habit to meditate regularly then we can also fix the things that are wrong in our life and in that sense depression if it had if it is coming from some external causes which may be snowballing in our mind so we may we address those causes in a reasonable way and the depression will not only be managed but will get cured now <clears throat> in some cases if in a person's life everything else is right but still they are feeling depressed then uh, we need to check whether there's some neurochemical imbalance which is causing that then some medication may also be required but that medication we don't want dependency on that unless it's a serious problem within the body because of which it's not able to produce certain chemicals or whatever so meditation will give us that perspective okay do i need this how long i need to take it because sometimes doctors might just recommend it in this current just keep taking it so we need to be building ourselves internally and then externally also and as we keep doing that gradually the uh, the the so causes of depression will decline and disappear from our lives and does meditation also make us dependent on meditation i won't use the word dependence i will use the word empowerment it's like if you exercise regularly then you feel empowered by that exercise if you do have a if you have a regular routine for exercise or workout then that that empowers us and then we do it regularly not because we are dependent on it but because it gives us strength so meditation can make us strong if we are weak and if you are already strong meditation can make us stronger so it is a source of empowerment and healing does it answer your question Is there something else on your mind? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we'll conclude. You had this question. You can conclude with that. very good question this says physical pain is a indicator that something is wrong which needs to be fixed so similarly emotional pain can also be indicator of something being wrong so when do we fix it or when do we just tolerate it or when we move out of it yeah broadly speaking all of us can benefit by increasing our tolerance level that means say right now if you are hearing this talk if suddenly some noise starts coming over here now that noise will distract us but if you could tolerate that noise and focus that's a strength because life will distract us in so many ways so in general a increased tolerance level is always beneficial but that doesn't mean tolerance is alone the solution to all problems tolerance is for a purpose like so right now the purpose would be that you want to you want to be a, be a part of this talk understand it so your purpose is to focus on the talk so you tolerate the distraction so we all need to have some purpose in our life and tolerance means to keep small things small so that we can focus on the big things 
but if tolerance if we are obstructed in doing that big thing itself if the pain becomes so much that we can't do the big thing then tolerance is counterproductive at that time say suppose uh, you are going in a metro train now in india uh, because the population is so high the metro bogey is for 50 people and there are 300 people in the bogey and it's squeezed together suppose you are standing and some people are like bullies so you are standing and this person come next to you and start pushing you and then suppose suppose we get angry how dare you push me i push you you think you are so strong i am also strong and they push us and we push us and they push us and we push us and we get so caught in pushing that our station comes and goes <laughs> and we still push now that would be foolish okay you think you are a big boss okay no problem so i'll move aside you are more space i it is a short journey i'll tolerate it so there keep the small things small this person wants to show off himself okay i'll move aside but suppose that person starts pushing us out of the train itself then we can't tolerate because that is interfering with our purpose of getting to the destination so it is our purpose that gives us perspective and then when to tolerate when not to tolerate so the person starts pushing us out of the train then tolerance is foolish at that time then we have two options broadly it's tolerate mitigate or immigrate <laughs> so mitigate means you know maybe maybe raise an alarm and maybe other passengers come along and they say, don't do this stop we do something to counter it but if that person has got several other people in their own group then immigrate means we might just go to another bogey so all three approaches uh, are valid and all three approaches can be invalid depending on what what is our purpose so if you are tolerating and you simply feeling helpless and you are not even pursuing any purpose then we will become resentful if you are mitigating but you are mitigating simply for the sake of fighting you did this i know this and our purpose is lost that's also very bad if you are immigrating then we are just running away from one problem to another problem to another problem that is also bad but if you are purposeful okay this is the purpose of my life and for this big thing this is a this is inconvenient but it's tolerable for this big thing then i'll tolerate it but for my big thing this is coming in the way then i have to counter it and i mitigate it or if mitigating it is taking too much trouble then i have better things to do in my life than fighting this war than fighting this battle mm. then i move on some balance that is not out of fear but that is because of focus on our purpose mm. so then either tolerate mitigate or immigrate all three are valid options mm. depending on what helps us further the important purposes of our life okay is answer your question So thank you very much for your attention and participation. We are very grateful that you came long way from India.